Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel, and this is the Torah series. We are reading the Torah, we are going over it, we are learning from it what we can and cannot do, what we should and should not do, and we are just appreciative that you guys would take some time to spend with us and that you guys would be part of our family to put in your inputs, put in your questions, your comments, and if you have prayers, of course, we appreciate if you guys would put down if you have prayers that need to be taken care of. So thank you guys for joining us, and we hope you guys will enjoy this series we do. Yes, and thank you guys very, very much. You guys are all, I say this all the time, but I, I truly mean this, you guys are all an extended family. We have a tremendous amount of people out there that we consider our as close a family as, as even closer than the relatives that we have, which are like biological family, you guys are even closer than that. And I think that's what Yah's, Yah's families are all about. It's about finding those who are seeking his ways, they're seeking his, his uh, desires. And those are the people that we want to get close with. And those are the people that we want to share our love with. We want to share our love with everybody. But as far as being Yah's people, it is an honor to even be have a chance an opportunity that you can be called by your creator to be something that most people will never ever figure out in their entire life and so um it's it's an honor and so <clears throat> let's begin let's go real quick with some blessings give me a couple of blessings guys everybody give me a, a blessing anything that you are happy thankful that you are just give me something that you are um that just piques your love for yah and that is a blessing. Our hands, the ability to do the work we can do. Didn't you use that one already? No. No? All right, go on. So. Tell me then about the hands. Go uh, up, that we up can to do the mic. work, that we can feel things, that we can basically just do anything with our hands that need to be done. Okay, Jake, what do you got? Uh, eyes to see, to see our way where we walk so we don't fall over. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine that. Or even having one eye. Can you imagine that? You wouldn't be able to, like, see? Uh, you get you have half your vision. Yeah, you'd have half the vision. It'd be like uh, your cows. Cows kind of, like, have a weird... They're kind of on the side of their head. Yeah. Honestly, I think they can see in front of them, it's, honestly. I think it's, yeah, I do too, but I think it's more of something about predators so you can, like, see around them for predators. Yeah, all right. Nicole, what do you got? Taste. Taste. Yes, and she's our cook, so that's very important to all of us is taste. So, Eli, how about you? Um, trees, they give us fruit, they give us wood, they give us, like, air. Yeah, trees. Yeah, it gives us everything. For us, trees are our life. We would be dead, literally dead, without the trees of Yah because that is how we fuel our fire. That's how we um, we do a tremendous amount of stuff. And that's, you know, that Yah has put us in a place where there's a lot of trees. And so thank Yah for everything. Um, I will say I, I am thankful for, again, his ingenuity and design. And I'm going to take it one step forward on hands. And I was sitting there over the other day, and I was sitting there filling up this, uh, I have this glass bottle that I use for my water, and I was filling it up, and there was dishes in the sink, and so I had to tilt the bottle to the side, and as I'm tilting it to the side and lifting it with one hand, as the water starts filling up, it gets heavier and heavier, and I start thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, if I did not have these finger prints, like these little rivets in my fingers, this glass could very well slip out of my hands while I'm doing this, and not only that, is I have enough force in my hands that I'm able to hold this jar at an angle while the water is filling it up and keep it steady. And it's just little things like that blow my mind that we are so well designed that we can do things of this nature. And you look at dogs, right? Dogs are amazing in of themselves. But like um, if they want to use a, a, eat a bone or something, they will put their little tiny dew claws, what we call dew claws, which are the thumbs. They'll hold the food down and they'll use it like little tiny hands. But Yah has given humans, even, you know, we, our fingers are a couple inches long. Um, we are able to wrap our hands around stuff. We are able to grip. If we had three fingers on each hand instead of five, everything we had would be clumsy. It would just be crazy. Yah has created absolutely perfect. And imagine if we didn't have a little tiny pinky finger, right? Everything you had, would everything would be different. Five is the absolute brilliant design on this. I don't think, I think six would have been clumsy. Four would have been terrible. And he gave us our fingernails. And so anyway, those are things that I just, I see every single day and they, I, I just can't get over them because if, if you think that we all just blew up like a, a, some big bang somewhere blew up and we all of a sudden had intelligent design and we're made like this and we're made in such a way. It can't be. There is, there's nothing, this, we're in a world of perfection. Our noses are not on the bottom of our feet. Imagine if your noses, my friends, were on the bottoms of your feet. 
Every day would be a little bit different. Which no, Your nose is on the right foot, so every day you'd have to lift your right foot up. You'd be able to hop around. You would smash your nose. Every time you tripped, you'd smash your nose. And imagine the smells coming off the bottom of the feet. You'd be smelling the dirt all day. Imagine that. So anyway, let's go into this. Um, there's something we really need to um, go over, and it might take a little bit of time. But this is from our dear sis, um, Carla. And this had to do yesterday when we were talking about pleading the blood of the Messiah. And something I'd like to go into this with all of you guys, everyone here at this table and everyone that was listening here, is I go over this all the time. I talk about how we came out of being programmed. If you are coming out of the Christian religion, it, as much as this is maybe a hard word to hear, you were in a cult. The only, if you go and look up the definition of a cult and what exactly a cult is, it is basically that you get into some sort of a, a thing and you guys start memorizing the same stuff over and over and over. You guys start believing the same stuff over and over and over. And that's what you do. It, it may be right, it may be wrong, but it's still a cult. And so when we come out of Christian religion, we have, we have always said that we need to plead the blood of the Messiah. Do we know that is scriptural? And let's begin right here. This is what Carla says. Shalom, Brother Jason. Not going to defend Christianity because our Messiah Yahushua said, follow me. And so I am going to be obedient to our Heavenly Father's Elohim Yahuwah's laws and commands in the Torah by biblical instruction. Like our Messiah Yeshua was obedient to our Heavenly Father's laws. Hallelujah. Yahushua's invitation, after all, was come follow me. Peter had accepted this invitation once and he was willing to accept it again, even if it meant facing his fears and doing something that seemed impossible. Matthew 16, 24, take up your cross and follow Yahushua. Then Yahushua told his disciples, if any one of you come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And then she has 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Then she has John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, he must follow me and there I and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Then Matthew four nineteen, and he said, "Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." That's not the right. Is one. this the right one? No. Okay, what am which one am I reading here? You need to go to. Where am I at? This is. Uh... Okay, let's finish on this one here. Um, this was about your house of Gentiles. This is this is about the house of Gentiles. Oh, okay, all right. Perfect. All right. So anyway, let's finish this up real quick because um, I thought it was good anyway. Let those who magnify your salvation say continue, Lord be magnified. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sustain me with a willing spirit. Torah in Hebrew can mean teaching, direction, guidance, and law. Okay. So I'm going to back step a little bit because I did flu bar this one up, but I am going to say that is that is exactly right. And so um, it, it's... Um, it's something, and let me go over this with Clarissa as well. So Clarissa, um, she goes, I apologize for coming in a couple days late, but may I ask, where is this found? Thank you. Yah bless you and your family. Um, dear sis, I hope you see this video today. So these, the laws of the house of Gentile, these came out of a hundred thousand excuses that we've heard over the years on why people do not follow the laws of Yah. And so we made this list. This, there was no list. There was no such list as ever to be found. So we made it. I made this up. We called it First Demon. And so I, I literally wrote the book of First Demon, as evil as that may sound, um, which it completely is, because um, when you go and you watch that video, there are a tremendous amount of uh, excuses. All right, Nicole, go ahead and, and find this one. All right, there we go. Morning Tour Keepers. This is the one I'm, I'm trying to get to. Okay. This is back to the blood of the, um, using the blood of the Messiah. So, and I haven't read this, and so that's why I wasn't quite understanding. Nicole read this to me yesterday, um, and I, some of these I don't get to until a day later. All right. When we are obedient to Yah's laws and commands, we are blessed with the ability to pray and ask Yah to send his messengers to protect us, right? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, are you paying attention, kid? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would say, yeah, I think someone else talked about how they asked for messengers to protect them before. I mean, when remember when, uh... Was it was one of the prophets. He was scared the men were going to come kill him. I think it was Elijah, I believe. And he started praying to Yahuwah, and Yahuwah sent messengers and protected him and blinded everyone around him. Um, right. And we also have Ezra in, in Second Ezra. I don't know if it's Second Ezra or Fourth Ezra or where it's exactly at. But he um, he went to rebuild the temple, and he uh, the king's like, "Well, do you want me to send you with a whole bunch of men?" And he's like, "No, my Elohim is with me. I won't do that." And so they were actually 
kind of stunned. The king, king didn't send anybody with them. And they're like, well, how do we how do we do this? How do we figure it out? And so I think messengers went along with them as well. But anyway, so um, is that yes or right? Yes or no? I would say, yeah, you play. I should say, yeah. Okay. The precious blood of the lamb, Yahusha, is for the redemption of our sins. At least this is my understanding from the following scriptures. All right. Um, anyone, look up Acts 9. Eli, so this one's all of Acts 19. Um, okay, Exodus 12, 13, anyone? Jaden, do Ezekiel 16, 6 through 4. Eli, do you need one? Yeah. Uh, look up Leviticus 6, 27. Ezekiel, on this. what was it? Ezekiel 16. 6 through 14. 6 through 14. Cade, what do you want? Exodus. You, you're... Is it Exodus 12? You said? Exodus 12, 13. Be 6 what? 6, 27. Let's start with those real quick. So, Exodus 12, 13 says, And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I shall pass over you and let the, and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I smite the land of Mitraim. Okay, so that's interesting. Did It seems to me that they use the blood as protection right there, right? right? That's the blood of the lamb. Yeah. The blood of the lamb, right? Okay, so Jade, what do you got? Then I passed by this you. This is Ezekiel 16? Yes, yeah, 16, okay. 6. Then I passed by you and saw you, trampled down in your own blood, and I said to you in your blood, live, and I said to you in your blood, live. I have let you grow like a plant in the great field, and, and, it, and you are grown and are great, and you come in the finest ornaments. Breasts were formed, your hair grew, and you were naked and bare. Again I passed by and looked upon you and saw that your time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness, and I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you, and you became mine, declares the Adon Yahuwah. And how far did you go? 14. 14. 14. 14. All right. And I washed you in water, and I washed off your blood, and I anointed you with oil. And I dressed you in embroidered work and gave you sandals of leather, and I wrapped you in fine linen and covered you with silk. And I adorned you with ornaments, and I put bracelets on your wrists and a chain on your neck. And I put a ring on your nose, and earrings in your ears, and a crown of adorning on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your dress was fine linen and silk, and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour, and honey, and oil, and you were exceedingly pretty, and became fit for royalty. And your name went out among the nations because of your loveliness, for it was perfect by my splendor, which I had put on you, declares the Adon. Yahuwah. Okay. Um, Eli, go into yours. What are you reading? So, Leviticus 6, 27, and it verse up, it's talking about the sin offering. Okay. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy, and when there is sprinkled of blood thereof upon any garment, you shall wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. All right, Jaden, Matthew 26, 28. Okay, go ahead and read your Romans 5, 9. Much more then, having, having now been declared right by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay. You said Matthew 26, 28? Mm-hmm. 2628, yep. What does that say? It says, For this is my blood, that of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Okay. Uh, so the blood, okay, so let's let's read more what she has here. I am not sure the blood of the lamb is for protection. It seems like the blood of the lamb was for the redemption of sin and a sign of being in covenant with Yah. I included a scripture where, where Yahusha in Matthew twenty six fifty three, do we read that one. Read that. No. Read that one. Twenty six fifty three. It says, "Or do you think I am not able to pray to my Father now, and He shall provide me with more than twelve legions of messengers?" Okay. So what we have right here. She says, "I included the scripture where Yahusha in Matthew twenty six twenty three fifty three. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and He will at once put my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? For this reason, I believe for those who are sanctified by the blood of Yeshua Yahusha, they can also ask for heavenly heavenly Father Yah to send messengers to form a hedge of protection around us. It seems that the studying Yah's commands, we are supposed to wash the blood off of ourselves and our clothes." If blood gets on us, not apply the blood on us like the Christians believe. Applying the blood on ourselves always seemed like a dark statement to me. Please advise if I am wrong with scripture. With love always, Yah bless. All right, so what do we What do we have? What do we know? Nicole, you had something. And she has Revelation 7, but there is one thing in Revelation 7 that says, I replied, this is out of the Amplified Version. It says, I replied, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are those who have come out of the great tribulation, persecution, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
Okay, so I guess what is what is the what is her? Well, I think it's is the blood meant for protection. Is do we call upon the name of the blood? I mean, do we have anything scripturally that says that we should or we should not? I know the disciples and Paul; they were all cast down demons using the blood of Yehoshua. That's Paul. I, I know, and I know everybody loves loves Paul, and I I hate to say this, but. I, everything in Acts gets cringy for me. It, the entire there's thing. Some issues. Yeah, there's some red flags that go off on me every time I'm, I'm reading through it. As we're reading through this in the family, my red flags are going way off. Okay, but anyway, so we know that Paul did this. What about any other doctrine that we know of that do it? And and would would our Creator send us messengers when we do it? I mean, we pray for messengers every single day, and in our prayers, we always go, Father, please bring the very best of the messengers that you have. Uh, you know, and they, they're, they're probably, the messengers probably all fight amongst themselves because we're always asking for the best of the best. And they're like, we are the best. And I, I envision them sitting around our house, like sitting where we cannot see them, but hanging out with us. And I think they're probably here somewhere. But that's how we do it. But we also say that we need to coat ourselves in the blood of the lamb. Is this doctrinal or is this a uh, programming? Uh, I would say to be forgiven you to use the blood and repent using the blood. About coating yourself. In how the do blood. we? How and again, where is this scriptural about using the blood and for forgiveness? I know we're supposed to call upon the name of Messiah and and do this, but where does the blood come into this? We have it when he was sitting at Passover and he has the cup of wine. He said, "Take this as my blood, and if you drink this, you'll have life." That's what he said. And then he said the same thing with the bread. This is my flesh. And we had another guy that blew into our. Um, telegram group and then blew out of our telegram group and he said that messiah yahushua went against the torah by that even statement by saying that you would drink the blood uh, it wasn't or, this is my cup right is it what exactly does it say does it, you guys remember it oh hold on i should be close to it um okay so uh i've got the arms because nobody else is doing anything here. Um, i need some, I, I need some bible stuff i, I right. in first john 1 7 but if we walk in light, and he is in light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yahushua Mashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, this is First John. Thank yeah. you, Eli. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so First John 1, 9 gives us precedent that the blood does wash us clean from sin. But do we call upon the name of Yah? Do we call, do we, do we fight the demons with the blood in the name of Yahushua? Do we get rid of them like this? What about, how, how, like, do in, we do that in the name of Yahushua? We do. Be, we, we, we do. So we've seen it in the in the New Testament. That's the only thing we have is like where Paul and Peter were going around. They would cast demons out in the name of Yahushua, and that's the only account we have. But other than that, Yahushua just told them to be gone. Yeah, and so maybe. What I, about though the protection that Yah had them do at Passover, where right. you take the blood of the lamb, you and take put the it perfect on your blood of the lamb, right, and, and you're you put protecting it on your yourself, doors, right, so that you protect, so that you're protected from the evil. Yeah. That passes by. Right. Well, it is a mark on your door. It is a protection. Um, I don't know. I don't. Ha I. I don't know if it's programming or what it is. We need to. We need to get to the bottom of this. Um, one way or another. And so I guess it's something. I guess we should probably all talk about. Um, you guys should probably study. Let's study up on this tonight as a family and figure this out. Um, are we doing it wrong? If you cat. If you. I don't even want to say cast off the demons because if you're casting anything, you're spell casting, right? That's that's evil, right? And so you need to unbind what may be bound to you. We must demon toss, and I, I've always heard that we demon toss in the name of Messiah Yahushua, in the name of because that is the that is our Messiah, that is our Melchizedek priest. Well, and I've heard that they tremble when they hear his name. Right. Well, the, yeah, the demons even tremble. And it even, even tremble. says they yeah. they didn't like it all throughout the Gospels that they didn't like him and right. They yeah, what, they, they're like saying, what do, you, what do you have to do with us, son of Adam? Why, why are, is, are you come before our time? Right? And so um, I think there is power in the name. I really do think there is power in the name. Um, whether or not we are using that properly or improperly, I guess, is something that we need to study up on and see if we're still under any kind of programming and um, figure this out from there. So anyone have anything else on this subject? Any topic? Um, definitely he uses his blood for forgiveness. You definitely be uh, using that as forgiveness, but for protection, we'll get back to that. Yeah, I'm protecting. I guess we'll have to get back to that because I mean, it. I think our Creator will send down legions of angels. I think he will. He will send us down. We have that spiritual protection. I don't. Um, maybe we have a little bit of programming in there when we are um, 
covering ourselves in the blood, but it always, you know, it always feels like the blood of the lamb. This is what it's all about. The entire point of our Messiah bleeding like that is that he became like a Levitical priest. He became like a Levitical priest. He also became like a, a Levitical sacrifice, right? All of it. And the blood, you, you guys remember back, I mean, it wasn't like we're supposed to wash the blood off us. We shouldn't have blood on us, right? But the priests would take a little bit of hyssop and they would sit there and sprinkle it over everything. And so, I mean, they, these guys were like, they were coated in blood. By the time they got done with a day, everybody had blood stains all over them. You would not be able to do the jobs that they were doing without being completely coated in blood. So the people may not be able to have blood, but the job of the Levitical priests that are doing whatever it is, is their job involves dealing with the blood. All right. Well, uh, I don't think we solved anything, but I mean, uh, we did address this and let's, uh, I guess, continue on and. Um, let's make it into our handy dandy split screen. If anybody else has any input or yeah. the scriptures, that if anybody else has scriptures out there they would like to produce and bring to this, we're always really happy to hear from you guys. And um, things like this, we don't have all the answers for everything, right? We we are still um, deprogramming ourselves along with uh, you know all of you guys out there and those who are are able to come out of the programming. Um, that is who Yah is looking for. All right, so let's get into this, and it's Numbers 23. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. good. Everyone good? Yeah. You guys all get breakfast? Yeah. Full? Yeah. Everything good? No issues? No. No one? All right. You guys are real boring today? Uh, I don't think we ever have issues. You never have issues? You guys always well, have issues, I mean, no. but you won't say them on the video because you're all shy, and you guys don't like to air our dirty laundry, so... No, it's real quiet. There was no, nothing no dirty laundry. Nothing crazy. No, yeah. no, that's good. All right, here we go. Number 23. And Bilam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars and prepare for me seven oxen and seven rams. I find that very interesting. Right we need out of the to gate. go back over what happened yesterday. Okay, yeah, let's go over yesterday's real quick. Kate, okay, let's recap. So we had. We have Balak and Bilam. We have Balaam, the crazy wizard. Everyone knows him as the sorcerer. He's like a famous sorcerer back then, and he was basically paid to curse the Israelites. But as he was going to curse the Israelites, Yah basically stopped him in a dream and said, Nope, you're not going to do this. You do not do, go with them. So he comes back to Bilaam and says, Sorry, I can't do it. Their, uh, their, their Elohim said, No, uh, sorry about that. And he goes, All right, let's try it again. So I guess Balaam's just like, All right, we'll do it again. And so then he gets another dream and says, Don't go with the men, only if they ask you to. But he still went with the men and almost died to a flaming, a flaming messenger, but was saved by his talking donkey. Yeah, talking donkey. And... Um so I find this very interesting because this guy was a sorcerer. This guy is a worker of magic, but he puts some um, seven altars up, right? And I find that interesting because that's Yah's stuff, right? That's his number, right there. Sevens, sevens of fifties, sevens of fifties. And so here we have um, seven altars, seven oxen, seven rams. All right, verse two. And Balak did as Bilam had spoken, and Balak and Bilam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And again, let me adjust for everybody the time that we're dealing with this, right? You're not going to just go and put seven altars up inside of a couple hours, right? You're going to, it's going to take you a long time, right? Unless you're, you have a bunch of servants. Well, you're going to have a bunch of servants. They would definitely have a bunch of servants, right? But it would still take them a tremendous amount of time. You're, you got to go find the rocks, right? You got to go find rocks. You got to go build the altars and you, you got to dig the rocks out, right? It's doubtful that they just had boulders sitting all over the ground. So they're going to have to find rocks and they're going to have to build this up. I would imagine this took days to do to build seven altars maybe maybe a full day but uh, i mean it's got to take some time all right and balak did as Bilaam has spoken and balak and Bilaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram and Bilaam said unto balak stand by your ascending smoke offering and i will go perchance yahuwah will come to meet me and whatsoever he shows me i will tell you and he went to a high place so he knew how to do sacrifices. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. That's what I was going to say also, is if I was a little evil wizard like this, and uh, I would be, I would explore every vast piece of knowledge that I could find and try to make my witchcraft better, right? You, that's your that's your point. You want to figure out how the occult works, and this is what this dude was doing. So he, he obviously knew Yah in, in some way. All right. Um, this is five, right? Four. Four. And Elohim met Bilaam. And he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And Yahuwah put a word in Bilaam's mouth, and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his ascending smoke sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable, and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, Aram, Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Yaakov, and come, defy Yashrael. How shall I curse whom El has not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom Yahuwah has not defied? 
For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him, lo, the people shall dwell alone, and I shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Yaakov and the number of the fourth part of Yashrael? Let me die the death of the Yashriam, and let my last end be like his. All right, what is going on? So Yahuwah told him to say these things to him. He's saying, basically, uh, Yahuwah didn't curse these people, so you can't curse them, because Yah has to be like the one to be able to let the curse happen. He says, that's not happening. He's like, these are my people. You can't number these people. They're too powerful. He's like, I'm not going to let it happen. Basically, he's saying he protects these people, and Balaam has no power. Right. All right. Verse 11. And Balak said unto Balaam, What have you done unto me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them altogether. Did he just bless them? Did that, is that what we saw? Yeah, I think Israel just got blessed. Yeah, from the tops of rocks, low the people. Yeah, somehow he got blessed through that. That's a strange blessing. And Balak said unto Balaam, What have you done unto me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed and speak that which Yahuwah has put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray you, with me unto another place, from whence you may see them. You shall see but the utmost part of them, and shall not see them all, and curse me them from thence. And he brought him into the field of Zophirim, to the top of Pekah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. So there's another seven altars. But there's only one. He only offered one. So he's getting cheap. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by your sending smoke offering while I meet Yahuwah yonder. And Yahuwah met Bilaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go unto Balak and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his ascending smoke offering and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What has Yahuwah spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, you son of Zephor. El is not a man that he should lie neither the son of Adam, that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he is blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Yaakov, neither has he seen perverseness in Yashrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. El brought them out of Mitzriam, he has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. All right, is your guys to say unicorn? My wild ox. Wild ox. It is like them, for it is like them, the horns of a wild ox. All right, why would this thing have a unicorn? Nicole, do you just have anything different? Mine says wild ox as Wild well. ox. Okay. Steve. Steven. Steven. Well, the, the king says the same thing. So the unicorn, I think, here's the thing, is I think this has been disputed before. I think back in the day, I think a rhino is what they call a unicorn. Yep. There's a one-horned beast, right? And that's what they call the unicorn. Uni, one, one horn, mm -hmm. a giant rhino. So this, that's I, I've seen this before, and people debated this before. And it, they believe, I don't think it's a wild ox, but it is like a wild rhino. And so if he's talking about the strength of a wild rhino, that's like a uh, that's like a bull on super steroids, right? That's like a, a big, big guy. Okay, 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Yaakov, neither is there any divination against Yashrael. According to this time, it shall be said of Yaakov and of Yashrael, what has El wrought? Now, why is he saying Yaakov and Yashrael? He's, he, this is like in two separate things. There's no divination against Jacob, no, no evil omens against Israel. So why is, he, why is Yah separating this or why is it not just Yashrael? Why is Yaakov separated? Anyone know? No, no idea. No one? I, I don't know. No guesses? Right. Maybe it's a blessing thing because, uh, like, Yaakov is like the father, and then Yashrael is the people. So I don't know. Maybe like he doesn't curse any of those kind of people. Um, but Yaakov began. Is Yashrael? Yeah, it is Yashrael. I mean, he became yeah. Yashrael. Like, yeah, yeah, more blessings when he became Yashrael. Right, and but there's no enchantment. I think he's just saying two different names. It's the same people, but I think it's two different things. Maybe. Neither is there any divination. So he would basically be saying there's no enchantment or divination against either of them. It's the same people. All right, 24. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. 
Wow. Drink the blood of the slain. So this is where people get really, really confused that Yah would have something like this, right? It's more of like, a parable. It is, it is. It said it above it. It's a parable. It said this is a parable. And this is what people don't understand. He's like, oh, oh, he's just going against the Torah. He says to drink the blood of the slain. That's not what okay, it means. He's talking, he verse. says a young lion, right? And if you guys understand, this is the same for dogs. It is the same for every kind of animal. If our dogs have a little cut on them, the pack will surround them and they will cling them up one way or another. Right, they will they will lick them, cling, um, and this is that's what they do. This is what these animals do. Is they they drink the blood. That's why we're not animals, or we're not supposed to be animals, and we shouldn't drink the blood. All right. And Balak said unto Bilam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Bilam answered and said unto Balak, Told told not I you saying all that Yahuwah speaks that I must do. All right, it sounded like Yoda or something. <laughs> Have I not <laughs> spoken to you saying? Mm, told not I you. Did I not say to you? Yeah, no, it's, that's not good. It's, that <laughs> why, was rough. Yeah, thanks, Doc. And, but I'm sure it says that in the king as well. It's like so hard to read the king. Told not I thee. Okay. At least we understand you. Yeah. All right. Um, and Bilaam answered and said to Balak. Uh, same thing. I liked it so much, I'd do it twice. And Balak said unto Bilaam, Come, I pray you, I will bring you unto another place. Perchance it will please Elohim that you may curse me, them, from thence. No, that you curse them for me from there. Yeah, it's Yoda talking. You curse me? <clears throat> what? No, you don't want to curse <laughs> No, don't curse me. All right. And Balak brought Bilaam to the top of Peor that looks toward Yesi Yaman. What does this say? The wasteland? Waste, waster. Balak, a Moaviti king. Balak. That's not what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. There it is. Yesi Yaman. Uh, a desolation desert. Mine says Salt. wasteland. Mine says the wilderness or desert. So these guys are out in the wilderness. All right. So he brought him toward um, Peor. It looks towards Yes Yesh -e Yaman. And Bilam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. Okay. Do you think he gave? I think the other one he must have given him seven bullocks and seven rams too. It, yeah, it's, it's one for each altar. Two for each altar. Well, yeah, but one seven, of each kind. Well, it said seven bullocks and seven rams. Uh, right. But one. it's one for each of the altars. Okay, but the last one didn't say seven, and did it? Yeah. It did it? And prepare were seven oxen and seven rams. Uh, I thought it just said one. But then it says... I think the second offering only had, like, it said it was... We're looking. I'm trying to find it. I don't know. All right, as you're finding it, I'm going to go into the next one. I think it's 16. All right, maybe. Yeah. Alright, and Balak did as Bilam had said and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Alright, cliffhanger. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, now. so it says and built seven altars and offer a bull and a ram on each altar. Okay, so there's, okay, so. So it's still seven. Well, it is still seven. So everything, yeah, everything's sevens. Alright, so that is it, gentlemen. Um, that, again, is uh, some interesting stories and some interesting tales. We'll leave another cliffhanger. We don't really leave cliffhangers, but this one is. Yesterday's was. This one is. Um, and, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like um, Balak is getting his way and with what he's trying to do. And uh, anyone have anything? Uh, you can't curse the people of Yah. So Yah is not going to... You know, well, the, you, here's the gig is right Yah now at this point. It. Right, he has to allow it. And right now he's not finding any kind of evil amongst them, right? But 40, 50, 60, 70 years later, I mean, they all are very evil people and they all fall into captivity over and over and over again because they just can't keep their... Keep their minds clean. Keep the their first clean. chapter of Judges, they literally go straight and leave all the people in the land. They let them live in the land. All the yeah, they start building Asheroth poles. I mean, they, everybody, it's, it's horrible things, right? And so these guys just can't get together. They, they had an opportunity that Yah would walk with them, and they denied that presence of our Creator. Now we are all fighting to get that back, and we are trying to do whatever it takes to see if we can walk with our Creator. And hopefully we have better faith. Hopefully we have uh, courage like Caleb and Joshua and that we are able to do great things in the name of Yah. And I guess with that, I would like to tell everybody, you guys are out there, our family, you guys are very much loved. Uh, huge grizzly bear hug from the bearded guy and uh, high fives from the family and 40 paws up. And I guess that's it. Anyone have anything else? Uh, tonight is Youth for Yah in Spanish. Youth for Yah in Spanish. If you know anybody who's speaking Spanish, we would uh, appreciate that you guys let them know. There are some good uh, Spanish speakers in the house, and they are willing to speak for Yah in another language as well. So here we are. Anyone else have anything? 
Uh, read your Bibles. We'll catch you tomorrow. Read your Bibles. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. We also have another channel. We have a backup channel. I guess you have to get a thousand subs to ever get live streaming, which I don't know if we'll ever get that on the backup channel. But that was our goal: is to get a another channel that we can do live streaming it's in case we. Thousand subs. It's a thousand it's a subs. Thousand? Wow, they've yeah. upped it. They've changed they've upped it. It used to be a hundred. Yeah. It used to be a hundred. Now it's a thousand. So yeah, we will uh, hopefully get there someday. So if we get in trouble on YouTube, we can still have a place to stream our Shabbat services and our Thursday night stuff that we do with you three. All right, gentlemen, thank you guys very much. Much love to everybody out there. All right, so long.